Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us for week number 35 of Live with Annie. Happy September, everyone. Can you believe the year is three quarters over? We're still going strong with these weekly Facebook Live videos. We've really enjoyed spending time with you each week and hope you've enjoyed them too and that you've picked up some good tips and techniques as well as inspiration for new projects. Last week was our monthly tips and tricks techniques. And boy, that was a mouthful. Last week was our monthly tips, tricks, and techniques episode, and we covered a lot of fun tips. How to install zippers in Project Bags 2.0, how to reuse the handy plastic cases in which Biani's hardware is packed, ways to work with Biani's label th labels that come in most of our patterns, and more. We also shared info about a great private group on Facebook called By Annie Bag Makers, and I see that their membership grew by over 700 since last week. If you'd like to connect with fellow By Annie enthusiasts, I recommend checking them out. If you missed last week's episode or want to watch it again, remember that all of the episodes of Live with Annie are available online. You can watch them on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, or by going to byanni.com slash live. I actually find it easiest to go to the byanni.com live link as everything is in one place. The current episode is right at the top, and there's a drop-down menu for all the past episodes. You'll even find a chat function. We will put up the link to make it easy for you to find. To thank everyone for joining us last week, our giveaway included the supplies to make a set of project bags. This included the Project Bags 2.0 pattern and enough soft and stable zippers and vinyl to make all four bags. The lucky winner was Joan Wilsbacher Edelman. So Joan, if you're watching, please contact marketing at byani.com. Trevor sent you a message on Facebook but hasn't received a response yet. Before we start on today's topic, I'd like to share a few updates. Last week, we mentioned that a ton of emails sent during July and August went to, into our spam filter. I basically did nothing but answer emails for a week, and we're finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. So if you emailed during that time and didn't get an answer, hopefully you've received a reply by now. One thing that I noticed is that many emails were from people who were having a hard time with add-on videos. So we're going to take some time at the end of today's episode to talk about some of the things that people have encountered and how to solve them. So stay tuned for that. And Glow, we can scoot on down. I forgot to delete all these things that I was going to say because we decided to move it to the end. So. Um, Thank you for your support and patience as we work through all of that. And if you're having troubles with add-on videos, make sure you join us at the end. Here's another quick heads up that I wanted to give you about an upcoming segment of Live with Annie. Um, this week, Kimberly emailed with a suggestion for a few future Facebook Live and said that she'd enjoy learning more about the process of making batik fabrics. I thought that was a really great idea, and I'm excited to say that my good friends Bruce and Diane Magison from Sew Batik Fabrics will be our guests on Wednesday, October 13th. So Bruce and Diane make really gorgeous batik fabrics, and they are a wealth of information. So be sure to mark your calendars and join us then. That will be week number 41. All right, today's topic is about choosing fabrics and threads. So we're often asked, where do you get all those beautiful fabrics and how do you decide what to put together? So today we're going to talk about how we choose and coordinate fabrics because we know that that can sometimes be a bit daunting. So we're going to talk about tips for picking soft and stable fabric and thread this week, and next week we'll continue on with tips for zippers, mesh, fold over elastic, strapping, and hardware, so that everything can complement and enhance your project. Let's start by looking at three ultimate travel bags. I'll see if I can fit these all up on the table. All right. 
We might have to do these one at a time. How does that work, Jake? Too much? All right, we'll do one at a time. All right, so this particular bag is made using abandoned fabric from Tim Holtz and Free Spirit. It makes a really classic, understated bag, and it would be a perfect travel bag for any guy. This bag has more monochromatic colors, which give it a really calm, serene look, and it'd be perfect for anyone, anytime. We made this one using Stitched from Alice in Glass from Andover. And finally, we livened things up on this bag that we made using a variety of brilliant colors from Cave Facet. This bag would be perfect to carry on a trip to a tropical island or to brighten a dark winter day. So as you can see, these bags were made with one pattern, but we got three completely different looks. So let's talk about fabric. Fabric choices are so personal and they really reflect the personality of the maker. One of my very favorite parts of our monthly photo contest is seeing all the different fabrics that people use for their projects. No two are ever alike. For me, the first considerations when choosing fabrics are how will the bag be used and who is the intended recipient. I will choose completely different fabrics if I'm making a bag for a teenager than for a man or my grandmother. And a bag made for a trip to Hawaii is probably going to look quite different than a bag made to take to a business meeting. If you've been joining us regularly, you'll remember that we talked about sewing for guys in weeks 28 and 29 of our Facebook Live and showcased projects made with more manly fabrics then. So be sure and check those out if you are looking for inspiration for more masculine projects. To find those episodes easily again, just go to byanni.com slash live, L-I-V-E, and use the drop-down menu to go to weeks 28 and 29. I'm going to grab a quick drink of water and then we're going to talk about choosing soft and stable. So before we start talking about picking fabrics, I have one really important tip to share. Almost every bag I show you today shares one very important attribute. From a tiny call me to a big ultimate travel bag, each bag is stabilized using Biani Soft and Stable. We're gonna bring a piece up here so you can see it. Soft and Stable is a product that I developed over 10 years ago to give body and stability to purses, bags, and other projects. It makes all the difference in creating a bag that looks like something you bought rather than something you made, and it's the key to creating beautiful bags with a professional finish. Soft and Stable is a firm but resilient foam with a softly napped fabric lining on each side. The soft fabric lining really hugs your fabric in place. So I'm just going to smooth those on there and you can see that I can pick this up and those fabrics are going to stay there. The quality of the foam is especially high. I think it's the very best on the market and it ensures that your product's going to project is going to stand up and hold its shape. Soft and stable is 58 inches wide and it comes in black or white. And we have it in half yard, one yard, or two yard packages, as well as in 15 yard rolls. We recommend that you use black when you're working with dark fabrics as it really enhances the colors. If we're using light colors, we prefer to use white. And I wanted to show you a couple options of that here. So if you look at the white, you're especially going to notice it on lighter fabrics. So here we've got a piece of white soft and stable. Here we have a piece of black. And you're not going to notice a huge difference right here on the dark fabric, but, but there is a difference when you look at it up close and the black is really going to enhance it. You're especially going to notice a difference though when I put this lighter piece of fabric on there. As you can see, the white really brightens the colors and makes them shine, where the black kind of grays them down. 
So I always tell people if you only want to purchase one color of Soft and Stable, I recommend you buy white. It will work under both dark and light fabrics. If you want to really enhance your dark colors though, black is a great choice. All right. Using Soft and Stable enables us to use just about any fabric for a purse or bag, even lightweight fabrics that wouldn't normally seem to be sturdy enough for a purse or bag. And our first fabric choice is always a high quality quilting cotton because of the wide range of colors and designs that are available. We're going to demonstrate how we pick using this fun line of fabrics from a new line by the amazing Natalie Barnes of Beyond the Reef. She designed this for Wyndham Fabrics and it's called Our House. Bonus points go to anyone who doesn't start singing the song by Crosby, Stills, Nash & Brown in their heads or out loud. The majority of Biani bag projects call for three different fabrics. A main fabric which is used for the exterior of the bag, a lining fabric for the interior, and a coordinating fabric for the handles, straps, and bindings. Occasionally, the pattern will call for a fourth fabric, which is usually called a contrasting fabric, and we might use it for borders, interior pockets, and so forth. Here's our rule of thumb that we, choose, we use when choosing fabrics. So we usually start by picking the main fabric, since it's the one that's going to be most visible. And we generally try to pick a large-scale print for that main fabric. Everything else is based on this fabric, so we try to pick something really interesting that has a variety of colors. And usually this is a medium to dark value print, but not always. Scale is a very important consideration when choosing this fabric, and of course that's going to be different depending on the size of the project. So for instance, I wanted to show you a few different projects that we made using this fun line um, from Tula Pink. This is Tula's handmade line, and as you can see, we can use a much larger scale for a bigger bag than for a smaller bag. So when we made these flipping out bags, we picked the smaller scale designs. When we made these small clam up bags, we used the smaller scale designs and we saved the larger motifs for the larger bags. This and also this um, undercover that we made again using the one with the big sewing machines. You could certainly use these on the smaller machines or the smaller projects, but that's just kind of a rule of thumb that we try to stick to. All right, let's get those moved out of the way. All right, so that's our main fabric that we're going to pick. Then for our lining fabric, we're usually going to pick something, in our case, that's lighter in color. Lighter in value, it makes it easier to see what's inside the bag, and we usually pick a smaller scale. So we'll often pick a medium scale for the piece that goes on the lining. And of course, these are just general rules that we make, and sometimes we break both of them, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. The next fabric we'll pick is the coordinating fabric. And this fabric helps tie everything together. So we usually try to find something that coordinates with both the main fabric and the lining fabric, and we often try to pick something that reads as a solid. We also really like using stripes for the coordinate, as we did on these take a stand bags and this little running with scissors, because we love how they look when you cut them on the bias and use them for your um, bias binding. We do have a really fantastic ship. Oh boy, my mouth is not working today. A fantastic tip to share for making bias bindings using stripes, and you'll find that in our beautiful bindings video, which is in the public video section of your digital library. This is a section that you're going to want to visit regularly, so Jake is going to walk through the steps with me to take you there. So the first thing you want to do is log into your account at biani.com and then click on Digital Library, which is on the bottom menu bar. You'll find it under the section that says My Account. Once you get into your digital library, you're going to see several sections. 
and at the top will be any add-on videos that you purchased. Then underneath that, you're going to see a section of recently downloaded patterns. And finally, at the very bottom, you're going to see a section called public videos. So you'll find the beautiful bindings video there, along with a lot of other really helpful videos. And be sure that you click on the See All Public Videos button so you don't miss any of them. You're going to find some great tips there, too, for working with directional fabrics. So be sure and check those out. All right, let's go back to um, talking about choosing fabrics. So one thing that can really make choosing fabric for a project easier is to use fabrics from a particular line. Fabric designers do a really fabulous job of coordinating a variety of fabrics of different scales, values, and designs. So most of the work is done for you. And here are a few more fabrics from Natalie's Our House line. As you can see, it's going to be really easy to pick a beautiful coordinated set just by staying within this line. So here are some that we thought would work well together. We thought we could take this fabric and make it our main fabric, pick something that has similar colors but is lighter in value for our lining, and this one reads pretty much as a solid, so it could be our coordinate and our handles and straps. Here's another fun option. Um, pink flowers with a more gray neutral lining and then a bright yellow to use for the handles and straps. Um, lots and lots of different choices and it's certainly up to you how you put those together. When we start playing we usually have um, many options before we decide on the final one. One other question that I'm often asked is how much fabric should I buy? We are really fortunate to get to work with a number of awesome fabric companies. They send us fabric and we make models using our patterns. We use the models to promote our patterns and they can use them to promote their new fabric lines. So it's a win-win for both of us. But normally when we choose those fabrics from the fabric companies, we don't really have a firm plan on what we're going to make. So what we normally do is just add, ask for two yards of each fabric in a line. This allows us to mix and match the fabrics to make a variety of items. And when our shipment of fabric arrives, we go through it just like I showed you there. We get out our list of projects that we want to make, and we sort through the fabrics to make sets of main lining and coordinate for each project. Obviously, with two yards of each fabric, we're usually able to make more than one project from a set of fabric. And we'll talk about that more in a bit. If the fabrics we've chosen for a project need to be quilted, we're going to put the main and lining fabric together and send it off to our long arm quilter so that she can work our magic. We make hundreds of bags each year, so having a supply of fabrics already quilted and ready to go is a huge time saver for us. Our long armor, Linda, does such a fabulous job of picking designs to enhance the fabrics, and we really appreciate what she does. Here are some tips for you if you have a mid-arm or a long-arm quil quilting machine or a favorite long-arm quilter. First, because getting the fabric set up on the machine is quite time-consuming, most long-arm quilters have a minimum charge. We discovered that it costs about the same amount to have a two-yard piece of fabric quilted as to have a one-yard piece quilted. So I figure I save half just by quilting a larger piece and a two yard piece gives us many more options. We have only one pattern, which is the large tools of the trade that requires more than two yards of quilted fabric. And you can really easily work around that just by cutting the inner padded sleeve out of a different set of quilted fabric. So we basically have the option of making any by any pattern from a two yard quilted piece, even our large ruler wrap like the one hanging behind me. And having the extra fabric also enables us to make better use of the fabric. For example, the ultimate travel bag, which is this one, calls for one and a half yards of main and lining fabrics to be quilted together. However, if we quilt a two yard piece, we just have to rotate this pocket sideways and we can get two bags out of a two yard piece. That's with careful placement or the extra fabric, 
fabric enables us to make coordinating items for our bag. And Jake's going to put up a picture of a bag that we made using Valerie Wells' uh, line called Kismet. So we made the ultimate travel bag out of that fabric, and we still had enough quilted fabric left over to make a quick sip case, uh, some open wide bags, and a pocket packer. So I've got that actual pocket packer here. And we even had enough left over to make this call me. So we have so many projects that use just small bits of fabric and they're really great ways to use all that fabric up. We did talk about using leftover quilted fabrics or unquilted fabrics in our weeks 15 and 16 of our Facebook Live. Um, so if you're looking for ideas for using leftover fabrics, make sure you check those out. Here's another tip. Let me see where I put the bag that demonstrates it. So if we're making a project that has more than one size, as we did for this open wide, we'll often use the lining side of the fabric for one or more of the bags. This gives us more variety while maintaining a coordinated look. It also allows us to quilt just one set of fabric. So we did just that on this set of open wide. So we started by quilting this pink fabric to this um, more white fabric. And when we made the bags, we didn't use it on the main, but on the medium size back, we used it with the pink side out. On the small bag, we used it with the white side out. So we could quilt just one piece of fabric and get two totally different looks. And then to tie everything together, we used the same lime green coordinate on all three bags. All right, I'm due for another drink of water. If you are just joining us, uh, today we're talking about choosing fabrics and supplies for your projects. We just talked about choosing the soft and stable, main lining and coordinating fabrics, and we shared some tips for quilting the pieces. I'm betting that many of you who are joining us today have long arm or mid arm machines, so I hope those tips have given you some ideas. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so post a comment to let us know how you quilt your fabrics. Do you quilt on a domestic machine, a mid-arm, or a long-arm? Let's talk next about threads. Threads are a crucial part of any sewing project, and there is a lot to consider, both in terms of type of thread and in terms of colors. As I said earlier, we normally send our fabrics to our long-arm quilter, Linda, to be quilted on a long-arm. Linda does a really fabulous job of picking designs and threads, so I asked her to share some tips with us. And I'm going to just pull up a couple pieces that um, we worked yesterday cutting a lot of projects out. And so here's some pieces that we had left over. So the first thing that Linda says is when she um, quilts fabrics, she doesn't want the quilting or the thread to take away from the design of the fabric. So what she does is she looks at the fabric and chooses a thread that matches whatever the dominant color is in that design. She also prefers to use a thread that is lighter rather than darker as a dark thread can look like scribbles on a piece. So for instance, on this one, she picked a lighter um, thread that blends in with the lightest colors in here. And the same thing on this one. I might have thought to put a blue thread on there, but by using the green thread that matches the lighter color, it blends in differently. And you can see here, had I used, had she quilted this with a darker thread, that dark thread would really show up on the lighter areas. Because she matches the thread to each side, she, or because she wants it to look good on each side, she picks different threads for top and bottom. This can sometimes be a bit complicated when one's, one is working with really dark and one is really light, so she has to be really careful to get her tension right so she doesn't have pokies showing through. Um, Linda says that she uses a lot of threads from Superior Threads, mainly their lighter weight threads like So Fine Number 50 and Omni, but she also likes to use Glide. 
For construction and assembly of the bag, we prefer to use Superior's Sofine number 50, and that's the thread we use almost all the time. Not me, I've got a few spools and cones of it here. So here's what we like about Sofine number 50. It's a smooth 50 weight, three filament polyester thread. It's lint, three, lint free, it has a matte finish, and it comes in 134 colors. The thread also has a little bit of a stretch that makes it strong and sturdy and perfect for bag making. It comes on either spools that hold 550 yards, which is really a lot of thread, plenty for any by any project, or cones that have 3,280 yards. So if you use a lot of one color, we highly recommend the cones. You'll need a thread stand to be able to um, use those with your machine, but those are um, readily available and Superior Threads sells one that's really nice and sturdy. I do know that many people also get great results using Aurafil cotton thread, and it comes in both a 40 and a 50 weight cotton thread, so that's another really good option. One thing to remember about thread, the higher the number, the finer th the thread. So assuming that your threads have the same number of plies, a 50 weight thread is going to be finer than a 40 weight thread. And Leslie, who helps us answer questions and is our tech editor, brought up a really important point to me this afternoon. She reminded me again that Sofine is a three ply 50 weight, 50 weight thread and Arafil 40 is only a two-ply thread, so she finds those to be very similar in weight, and that's really good info, Leslie. Um, thank you for sharing that. All that said, we really like to use Sofine 50 for several reasons. Again, it's strong and sturdy, but it's also fine enough that we can stitch multiple times in the same place without a lot of thread buildup. And I wanted to show you that on this get out of town bag. So when we make the handles for this bag, we top stitch all the way around the handles to secure the strapping that's in the inside. Then when we attach the handles to the bag, we stitch again on those very same lines. And to create the divisions on the pockets that are on the inside, we stitch again along the other lines twice because we start at the bottom, we stitch to the top, and then we pivot and stitch back down. By using Sofine number 50 or a similar weight thread, these lines are going to be much less noticeable than if we are using a heavier weight thread. We generally try to match the thread to the fabric zippers mesh and fold over elastic as much as possible. So this might mean a number of thread and bobbin changes as we work through a project. Generally, the majority of the stitching is done on the coordinating fabric, and if we're lucky, that thread might blend with the main and lining fabrics too. So we might be able to use one thread for the whole project. However, sometimes our choices require several different threads. So for instance, on this bag, we used four different threads. So we used this red anytime we were stitching on the coordinating fabric. We used the gold when we were stitching on the lining fabric or the orangey gold. We used the turquoise when we sewed the fold over elastic on our inner pockets. And we used the navy when we stitched the zipper down. So um, there are times when you're going to um, appreciate having all 134 colors of so fine number 50. Here's another tip. Thread wound on a spool looks darker than thread that's laid out. So when you take, when you're auditioning threads, lay them out on your project to see how they look because they're going to look different um, when you view it just as a single layer. Here's another really helpful tip. We recently prepared a color chart that matches colors of both Sofine 50 and Aurafil thread to all 48 of our zipper colors. The colors picked are also perfect for the mesh and fold over elastic that go with the zippers. And you can find that information along with a printable PDF chart at our website. So to find it, and Jake's going to walk through this on the screen, the first thing that you want to do is click on the frequently asked questions link that's under the customer service heading on the bottom menu bar. 
once you get into the Frequently Asked Questions section, scroll down to the line that says Needles, Threads, Stitch Length, and Seam Allowance, and click on that. Then click on the first line, which says which colors of thread match your projects, and you'll see the list as well as a link to a PDF that you can print. And note that the list is sorted by SKU for the zipper colors and that the 14 most popular colors of zippers, which also have matching colors of mesh and fold over elastic, are marked with a little star. So that is a really helpful list um, that if you um, sew with either Sew Fine number 50 or Aurafil, you'll really appreciate having that information. And I want to give many thanks and hugs to Leslie, who again is our tech editor, for her help in sorting out the colors for the chart. Leslie tells me that she has all 134 colors of Sew Fine number 50, as well as all 270 colors of the 40 weight Aurafil thread, but she only has 140 14 colors of the 50 weight Aurafil thread. Uh, Leslie was an Aurafil artisan for two years and she says she prefers the 40 weight Aurafil thread for bags and quilting. As you can probably tell from that list, uh, Leslie is amazing at organization and she keeps lists for every project she's ever made, including what fabric, threads, and supplies she used. Uh, in fact, you can ask her for any particular color of zipper, what she's made of, from it and she can tell you. She also has lists of every pattern she owns, what she's made from them, and what supplies she used. Leslie made her first Biani bag, the original A Place for Everything, in 2013, and she has since made hundreds of projects from 57 different Biani patterns. I actually have Leslie to thank for Tula Pink discovering our patterns. Way back when A Place for Everything first came out, Leslie made a custom bag for Tula Pink, which led to Tula Pink discovering us, and the rest is history. So thank you so much, Leslie. Leslie really keeps me on track and greatly improves by any patterns. She also helps us answer your questions each week on these Facebook Live videos and is a wealth of info. So send her some hearts and let her know how much you appreciate her. You can always find her on Instagram using at Lellybunny. Um, she always shares lots of great projects as well as a wicked sense of humor. So thank you, thank you, thank you to Leslie. All right, one more quick drink of water. I hope that today's program will be helpful to you as you pick fabric, soft and stable, and threads for your projects. Again, next week, we're going to continue on with tips for choosing the rest of the supplies for your project. Zippers, mesh, fold over elastic, strapping, and hardware. Just remember, the projects we showed today and which we'll show next week were made using our choices. You may want something completely different. There are so many options, and as we said before, there are simply no right or wrong choices. So pick colors that make you happy and have fun sewing. And as always, please be sure to check with your favorite local quilt shop to get the fabric, pattern, and supplies for your projects. If they don't have them, remember that they can order all Biani products directly from us or from their favorite distributor. We want to all do our part to keep our local quilt shops strong and successful. So thank you so much for joining us today. Again, before we close, we're going to talk a little bit about add-on videos and coupons. As you may remember, in the last month, we had a situation that ended up placing all of the inquiries sent through our website in our spam folder. I spent most of the past week helping the team respond to emails, and this provided me with a really interesting opportunity to get a closer look at some of the problems you experience as you use our website. By far the most common problem I noticed has to do with add-on video coupons and how to apply them. So we want to go over the steps right now. So when you order a pattern that has an add-on video, you are going to find a physical coupon right in the pattern. Looks like this, it has a not a great picture of me on one side, and on the other side you're going to see a unique coupon code. So to demonstrate the process, we're going to show you on screen how to purchase your add-on video using your coupon. And we're going to use the coupon to, de 
to download the add-on video for ClamUp. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take a look inside your pattern and pull out the half sheet coupon um, that looks like this and then go to our website, which is buyannie.com. Then log in to your account. By logging in, it ensures that you'll have a record of your order and that the coupon will work. If you try to order the video without being logged in, you're going to get an error message. So then once you're logged in, type clam up in the search box and that's going to take you to the clam up product page. And you're going to see that there are two products shown there, the pattern and the add-on video. Note that the add-on video is an entirely separate product from the pattern. So if you add the pattern to your shopping cart and try to apply the coupon, you're going to get a message that says, warning, code is either invalid, expired, or reached its usage limit. So make sure that you're adding the clam up add-on video to your cart, not the pattern. Once you've done that, then go to your shopping cart and find the field for the coupon code by clicking the gray box that says use coupon code or thank you credit. And note that the code has to go in that box. If you put it in the notes field that's going to appear later, it won't be applied to your order. So then you're going to enter the code and in this case we're calling it ADXX123 and once you've entered that in there, press apply. Then look at the line that's below the subtotal over on the right side and you're going to see that $5 has been deducted and your new total is $0, assuming you have nothing else in your cart. Now you will proceed through the checkout process by clicking checkout and on that page you're going to have another chance to make sure that everything looks right and that your total is zero. So before you can finish the checkout, there's one more thing you need to do. You're going to have to click the little checkbox um, to accept the terms and conditions, and it's above the continue button. And then once you're done, you can confirm the order to finalize your purchase. You're going to know that you've successfully added the add-on videos once you see the next page that pops up, and you can find your new videos in your digital library. And remember, your videos will not expire as long as you have your account set up on our website. So from now on, you can log in to access your videos anytime, day or night. So if you want to sew at 2 o'clock in the morning, have at it. Remember, too, that the Frequently Asked Questions section that we talked about earlier when discussing thread colors is there. And we add questions and answers to that section regularly. It's a wealth of information. And again, you'll find it by going to buyani.com, clicking on the frequently asked questions that's on the mod mo bottom menu bar under the customer service tab. You're going to find a lot of really helpful information there about add-on videos, how to use the website, what needles and thread to use, all kinds of stuff. Um, many of the video, many of the answers also include videos that help you access parts of the website. So it is a really great place to start when you have questions. Let's move on now to our featured local quilt shop of the week. One of our very favorite events each year is our local quilt shop contest that we host every February which will be here before we know it. Um, in that contest, we encourage sewists to vote for their local fav favorite local quilt shop and share a little bit about what makes that shop special. So each week we are highlighting a store and some of the voter submissions that were received um, during that contest. This week we are featuring a store that is near and dear to my heart, Mother Superior's Fab Fabrics, which is right here in beautiful St. George, Utah. The store is owned and operated by my dear friend, Heather Purcell, who many of you um, know as Mother Superior. Heather and her husband, Bob, were instrumental in getting Biani patterns introduced to the world, and I definitely owe them a debt of gratitude. I learned so much about thread and needles and color and the quilting industry from Bob and Heather, and I will be eternally grateful to both of them. The store has amazing color walls and an excellent selection of batik fabrics. They also stuck, stock a full selection of superior threads from Sofine number 50 and Masterpiece 
to Rainbows and King Tut. They are known for their wide selection of fun and gallery-worthy quilt kits. From cute panel kits with character prints for children's quilts, to bold, beautifully colored batiks with geometric repeating patterns, one of their kits is sure to inspire your next project. Fab Fabrics also carries many Biani patterns and other products and always has a great trunk show of Biani models on display. Customers raved about their huge selection, the helpful staff, and the peaceful, calm atmosphere in the store. Jeanette wrote, I love their selection. They greet me each time and ask if I need their help. They are so kind and helpful, plus they have a great website. If I'm looking for something, I can always check online first. So we want to say thank you to Heather, Danny, Jay, and all the crew at Fab Fabrics. We really appreciate your inspiration and your friendship. Thank you, too, to all of you for joining us today. We know there are lots of ways you can spend your time, and we really appreciate that you take the time to join us. So to say thank you, we have another fun giveaway today. I stuck everything in here so that I could access it easily. So first of all, one lucky winner is going to receive our flipping out pattern, which includes a coupon to get the add-on video free, a half yard package of soft and stable, a one yard package of fusible interfacing, a half yard package of Biani's lightweight mesh, a two yard package of fold over elastic, and a 40 inch double slide handbag zipper. That is everything you need except fabric to make both sizes of the flipping out. And flipping out is this cute little set. So it makes a large one, a small one. You can zip up and keep everything handy. You can also fold down the sides for easy access to everything that's inside. These are so handy for so many uses and they also make great gifts. And as always, remember that soft and stable comes in black or white, mesh and fold over come in 14 different colors, and 40 inch zippers come in 32 fabulous colors. So if you have a preference for what colors of all of those you'd like, please let Trevor know when he reaches out to you to let you know that you're the winner. And here's what you need to do to win. And remember, this doesn't work on YouTube, so you have to do it on Facebook. So the first thing is leave a comment. Tell us what you learned in today's presentation. Do you have any tips for choosing colors for fabric and supplies? Which by any pattern that we showed today would you like to make next? And what are your favorite colors? Of course, we always enjoy learning about any special tips you have or ideas for new patterns. Secondly, we ask that you tag a friend. We want to spread the word about our weekly lives, so please share a comment with someone who you think would enjoy them. And to tag someone if that's new to you, just type the at symbol followed by the name that they use on Facebook. Um, if you've got the right name, their name and a picture of them will pop up so you can confirm it's the right person. Click on that, add your comment, and submit it. We are going to pick winners from comments made by midnight mountain time tonight, so you have a little over nine more hours to watch and comment. And finally, remember to check your Facebook messages. Trevor is going to notify our winner and ask you to email your shipping address. And again, you can let him know then which colors of all the different products you prefer. Thank you again for everyone who joined us today. We are going to be back next week at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with another fun episode of Live with Annie. We'll be continuing our discussion of color and sharing tips for choosing zippers, mesh, fold over elastic strapping, and hardware to complement your project. We've got lots of great tips to share, so be sure to join us then. And until then, happy stitching! <laughs>